In this video, you will learn how to create and use a DocuSign PowerForm in 2024. You will learn what a PowerForm is, when can they help you in your workflow, and how to set one up. Just after I show you how to create and use PowerForms, I will show you how to use web forms which are even better than PowerForm. A PowerForm is simply a self-service document that your signers will be able to access on their own without the need for you to have to send them the form in the first place. So, for example, in a standard DocuSign envelope workflow, you, as the sender of the document, will create an envelope and you'll upload the documents and specify who needs to sign. So you will enter a recipient name and information, you'll add your field, and then your recipients will receive the envelope, sign, and then the envelope will be completed. Obviously, each workflow is different, but that's the general overall standard DocuSign workflow. But with PowerForms, the workflow is a little bit different because it's your signers who will access the form link, whether that link is embedded on your website or someone shared the link to the PowerForm via email to those signers. But in any case, your signers will initiate the transaction when they're ready. And so your signers will find the link, then they will provide their name and email, as well as all the other recipients who might need to be included in the workflow. The signers will sign and then the envelope is completed. When we have a standard envelope workflow, the sender initiates the transaction. But on a PowerForm workflow, it's the recipients who initiate the workflow and they just provide their name and email directly on the form, sign the document, and then when they're done, you receive the envelope. Let me give you an actual business use case so you understand a little bit better. Imagine that the business you're working for provides loans to customers. And so you have this loan application form that's here and it needs to be signed by applicants, whether there's one or two applicants, it does not matter. And so instead of waiting for those loan seekers to contact you, and then you as the sender of the document going to your DocuSign template, add the name and email of the recipients and click on send, which will delay the transaction because your signers have to wait for you to send them the document, loan seekers can access the document directly from your website using an embedded power form. So in this example here, we are on the SolarScience website and we have this loan application form embedded directly on the website. And so I can add my name and email here. If I have a co-applicant, I can just add the name of the co-applicant, which means that you as the person who needs to collect signatures don't need to know the name and email of additional recipients in the workflow because it's the first recipient of the power form. So the first signer will provide their name and email as well as the name and email of all the other signers. And then when they click on begin signing, they will fill out all the required fields, upload documents if needed. And then if there was a co-applicant, that co-applicant will receive the, the DocuSign envelope. And once all signers have completed the documents, then you will receive a copy of the documents. They will receive a copy of the documents as well. And then that's it, you're done. You didn't have to get involved. You didn't delay the transaction and your signers had a better experience because everything was self-serve. Now let me show you how to create a PowerForm and it's very simple. If you already know how to create a DocuSign template, it's only going to take you a few clicks. Now, if you don't know how to create a template to watch my other video on how to create DocuSign templates, let's just assume that you have already your template ready. You will simply click on more here and then create PowerForm. On this screen, you'll be able to give a name to your PowerForm if you want to. You can also customize the email subject as well as the instructions for the first recipients. And those instructions are here. So you can just change the text to provide more information to your signers about what they need to do and what's going to happen next. Once you've done that, and you can go inside of the options, you can require email validation. So if you want your signers to have to confirm their email before they can actually access the document, you can do that. This will help you prevent incorrect email addresses so you have less follow-up to do. You can also display a custom message that will be visible to all signers as they are filling out the document. And you can also set usage uh, limits. So for example, you can say that people can only submit one or two forms and this will be based off the email address they use when they fill out the documents and you can also set a usage limit by time between responses. This will help you make sure that you're not wasting a lot of forms because every time you have a submission you are paying for an envelope. When you're done click on create and here you will get two things. First you'll get the URL and so that URL can be shared by email or any other communication channel of your choice. And you can also use the embed link 
the embed link is what will help you make sure that the power form displayed on your uh, website which will help you with keeping the branding consistent. Now, right after you've created your power form, you might want to change the sender of the power form. The sender of the power form will appear in the DocuSign email notifications that your recipients will receive once they've completed the form. The power form creator or just an admin within your organization, and you don't want recipients to see your name in email as the sender of the DocuSign notifications, I recommend that you change the power form sender to someone who is going to be client facing, who is going to be in contact with customers or create a generic email such as info at or docs at companyname.com. And then you change the power form sender to that email. Another thing that you want to know about power forms is that it's very easy to extract data into a CSV file. So for example, here we had 15 submissions from people using this power form. If I click on download, and then specify the date range for which I want to get the data. I will then get this as a CSV. I think setting up an integration with your systems is a much better option, but you never know. That might help you one day. Now that you know how to create a power form, let me tell you one thing. Stop creating power forms. It's outdated. Now power forms are being replaced with something called a web form. A web form are so much better and they are also included in your DocuSign plan. If you have access to power forms, you also have access to web forms. And if you wondered what DocuSign plan gives you access to that, you have to be at least on the Business Pro subscription or you have to be on an IAM plan. And if you're wondering who I am, my name is Sofian Saudi. I'm a next DocuSign implementation consultant. I was working with DocuSign before, but since 2019, I founded Solution Consulting. Our agency helps businesses integrate and automate DocuSign workflows. So if you don't have the time and all willingness to fight with DocuSign and try to learn everything about it, our team can help you set up all DocuSign templates, web forms, and integrations for you. You can schedule a free DocuSign implementation strategy call using the link just down below. During the call, our consultants will review your current workflow and help you strategize the best implementation roadmap for your specific needs. But if you do have time and want to learn how to set up DocuSign yourself, I invite you to download our free DocuSign Mastery Cheat Sheet just down below as well. It'll help you figure out how to get started with DocuSign the right way. All the links that I'm mentioning in this video, you can find them in the description just down below. Back to the web forms. Why do I recommend using a web form versus power form? There are so many limitations with power forms, but in a nutshell, web forms will help you create much better self-service experience when your signers need to complete documents, when they need to provide you information. For example, in this loan application, we could potentially have applicants with co-applicants. If we use a power form, we cannot force them to provide a name and email for the co-applicant because we don't know whether they have a co-applicant who needs to apply for this loan as well. But with web forms, we can create wizard type questionnaires that will identify whether or not somebody needs to add a co-applicant. And if that's the case, that person will have to provide a name and email of the co-applicant. Let me show you. I'm providing my name and email. I'm not going to fill out all the fields. We don't need to do that. I'm going to click next. If I choose yes to do I have a spouse, then I have to provide a name and email for the spouse. But if I choose no, I don't have to provide this information. This means that there are much less chances that I will be making a mistake when completing the document, which means that you, the sender of the document, will be happier because there'll be less admin to do because there's less chances that you will have to do any sort of follow-up work. Now, the second thing you can see with web forms is that we are not being displayed the document. We are just seeing the form fields inside the document, but the document itself is hidden until we sign the document. Why does that happen? It's all about mobile responsiveness. Let me show you what I mean. If I change the view to an iPhone screen size, you can see that the size of all my fields and my form wraps around the iPhone screen size very well. It's easy to read and complete if I were using a mobile device. It's not the same with a power form. Let me show you the difference. Imagine having to fill out a document with that size on an iPhone. As you can see, it's not the same experience. You're gonna to have to constantly zoom out and scroll through horizontally and vertically. And this form is not very difficult actually to fill out. There's only one field per row. But when you have complex forms, it's very, very different. Let me give you another example. If we use a W9, which is what contractors have to fill out when starting a new freelancing or contracting job. This is what they would have fill out on a mobile device with a power form. 
but with a web form, this is what the document would look like. But let me just finish that application with my web form. I'm going to pretend that I've provided all the information. I get to review all my form fields entries just in case I've made a mistake and I can go back and edit it. And when I click next, this is when you are charged for the envelope. With a power form, you're charged as soon as you click on begin signing, which is not which is not very cost effective because a lot of drop-offs could happen. As you can see now, I'm seeing the document fully completed because I've provided all the information in the previous form fields. I'm going to click on sign and that's it. And this is what the experience looks and feels like when you're using a DocuSign web form. Now to create a web form, the process is very similar to create a power form. You'd simply ha want to have your template first there's more things that you will have to customize at the template level though. I'm not gonna get into all of this in, the, for the, in, in this video, but you'll click on start and then web form, create a web form. From there, you will choose the DocuSign e-signature template you want to use as the basis of your web form. And then you will click next. And then from there, you will be able to customize what form fields appears on what page, change the layout of the questions, add conditional logic, do a bunch of things you can't do with power forms. Now I've got a full tutorial that is dedicated to web forms. I really recommend that you watch it next. And if you don't have the time and or patience to create your own DocuSign templates, we can help you with that. You can book a strategy session with a DocuSign automation consultant to find out more about our consulting and implementation options. I will see you in the next video. Ciao.